I'm Ryan Kawano. I'm Steven Ogi. And I'm Darren Kobayashi. And uh, today we're going to be teaching you how to use a breadboard. Okay, so this is your breadboard. To power your breadboard, you have your power cord. The receiving end plugs straight into the breadboard outlet here. The end with the prongs will plug into a wall outlet. That will power your whole circuit. Now, these things right here are called your... This is your negative lead or common port. This port is for 5 volts. This port is a variable port for 0 to 15 volts positive and this is 0 to 15 volts negative. It has different ratings on the top, 300 milliamps or 1 amp. You, they're used for different ratings for your power circuits. All right. Now this is your switch. It turns the breadboard on, it turns the breadboard off to make sure that your circuit is powered on and off at the right times. Now. These columns, uh, these rows and these columns here, the ones with the blue and the red lines indicate the power to the red is positive, the blue represents your negative. Each one of these holes in line are all connected here and these in this line are all connected here. The grid down here is slightly different. The way that these are wired are through the rows. Row 1 is connected, row 2 is connected, row 3 is connected. However, the columns A are not To connect these, you would have to put a jumper wire from 1 to 2. Then rows 1 and 2 are connected. If you notice, there's a space right down the middle that separates rows A, B, C, D, and E from F, G, H, I, and J. That means right through here is connected, there's a break, and right through here is connected. This space is used for IC chips or integrated circuits in your circuit that you're testing. To use a breadboard, all you need to do is plug the components in correctly to these holes here and wire your circuit according to the diagram. And that's basically how a breadboard works. So right now I'm going to show you the basic way of how to wire a circuit on this breadboard. First you got to like, you got to up from this, from this part and put the, make sure the wire is tightened inside of the knob underneath the metal. And then just have it plug into a part of your breadboard. To get the power from this line into one of these strips of the breadboard, you have to make a jump with one wire. Again, you want to make sure that the wires fit snugly into the breadboard so that you have a reliable connection. And for the rest of the breadboard, if you want to link things to other, to other lines, you just use more of these jumper cables. Okay, now that you know how a breadboard works, um, the uses for a breadboard is basically to test out circuits that you're not quite ready to put onto a circuit board. And the reason is because on a, on a breadboard, it's easy to change around components and adjust the circuit around, whereas on a circuit board, it's in a fixed position, so it's harder. And you have to pretty much change the whole circuit board around. Using this schematic, we wired all of our components according to the diagram. And this is what our circuit looks like. This is an example circuit of an electronic mosquito repeller. The same theory that we explained today can be used to wire any circuit that you feel fit on a breadboard. After you wire a circuit on the breadboard and you find out that it works, you can then create a circuit board and wire your circuit more snugly and more permanently onto a circuit board. Thank you for watching our video and we hope you learned something about